The universe that Tolkien created is unparalleled for an entire world of literature. Not only being the father of fantasy, he created a complex mythology for entire England. He wanted for his country to have the same legends from the past as have Greeks or Scandinavians. Thanks to the fact that he was a philologist who spent his entire adult life studying all languages, he developed his world to such a depth that other fantasy authors can just adore him. There is no debate about the fact that Tolkien was a true genius from the point of his imagination and world building. There are on the other hand also people who prefer a different style of writing or prefer to watch a successful movies of Lord of the Rings. So in this video I will take a look at these books which I read and I will briefly talk about them so you will see if it's something you would like to try or not. So today we are talking about Tolkien and his most famous books. The first one on the list, The Hobbit. A charming children's book that tells a simple story of a treasure hunt and the characters of Bilbo Baggins and the wizard Gandalf appear in it for the first time. When Tolkien was asked to who in his world he has closest to, he said that it would definitely be a Bilbo Baggins who was a significant figure in the Hobbiton. Tolkien admired the life that hobbits lived, whether it was spending time in a nature, talking with friends in the pubs, relaxing in their gardens, or smoking pipes with a good weed. After Gandalf introduced Bilbo to the group of dwarves, they went together to save the city in the mountain and defeat the dragon that occupied it. The book also includes a map in which you can easily follow the adventure of Bilbo and the dwarves, drawn by Tolkien himself. When I planned to read this book, I didn't expect that the book for children could be so impressive. While reading it, you can feel that author wrote it with love for his son, so he could read him a simple bedtime story. It is a wonderful work of love, a true soul healer. The book is significant not only for the quality of the text, but also for the first appearance of Bilbo, Gandalf, Smeagol, known as Gloom, and also the One Ring. The next books are trilogy of the Lord of the Rings, which Tolkien was writing for 12 years. The first one, Fellowship of the Ring. For me personally, this is the best book from entire series because it combines a magicness of Hobbit with a more mature story, which is more adventurous and complex, but the book still has a feeling of a cozy home. It's an absolute gem and the perfect storytelling about Frodo's journey and at the same time it contains the most material that didn't make it into the film, which is why it is still an interesting read even for a fans of Peter Jackson's movies. So, from my point of view, this is the best book Tolkien ever wrote. Thanks to it, we get the introduction to the more complex world of Middle-earth and we can feel the depth of Tolkien's lore and mythology which he created. Also, in this book Tom Bombadil appears, so that alone is a good reason for reading it. Next one, The Two Towers. This is, in my opinion, on the other hand, the weakest of the trilogy. The book is an intermediate step between a more cozy Fellowship of the Ring and Epic Return of the King. I didn't have such a profound experience from it, however, it is still Tolkien, so the quality of the text is in an astronomical level. This book also contained my favorite moments from the entire Lord of the Ring series, such as Battle of Helm's Deep or The March of the Ends. The March of the Ends was to my surprise much more epic in the book compared to the movie and I didn't know that was even possible. On the other hand, the Battle of Helm's Deep got a lot more space in the movie because in the book it was a matter of few pages, while in the movie it was climax of the whole plot. And the last one of the series, Return of the King. Well, what the epic story. A complex narrative of a large number of characters that intertwines across the old Middle Earth. The book culminates the entire series, thanks to which it has an ever increasing grandiosity of storytelling, and it also contains a number of appendices that will satisfy even the most demanding fans. Compared to movie, 
The book also has longer closings of all storylines at the end with the fact that in the book you get a lot more content which unfortunately didn't fit into the movie. It's a great closing of this perfect trilogy, a masterpiece of the world literature. It should be also said that the music created by Howard Shore is an integral part of this trilogy. It's safe to say that he is nothing less than a musical genius and when Peter Jackson's wife heard the music for the first time, she said that Howard's compositions will be second half of the movies and she was absolutely right. Thanks to this, even today, more than 20 years after the premiere of the Lord of the Rings movies, Orchestras are traveling all around the Europe and playing Howard Shore's music from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. For many people, this music is a significant part of these movies because it creates a strong atmosphere for all these stories. If you want to make a deep dive into the music of Lord of the Rings, you can check three videos from a different YouTube channel where this music is analyzed just perfectly. Links will be in the description of this video. So anyway, we can jump into the next book from a Tolkien universe, which is The Silmarillion. Tolkien's most complex work and the peak of his writing, but for many fans also a disappointment as this book doesn't have a classic story, for example, like Lord of the Rings. This legendarium can tackle only very committed fan as it is something like a Bible of Middle-earth, which consists of many stories from creation of universe through all ages to the events after the destruction of the ring. From the text of the first age, I especially enjoyed the part about Beren and Luthien and also from the second age, Fall of Numenor. This story about Beren and Luthien was very important for Tolkien because names of these characters have Tolkien and his wife Edith on their tombstone. So this beautiful love story was probably very personal for Tolkien and he depicted love between him and his wife in similar way as was written in his story about Beren and Luthien. The book is rather a scholarly act of writing down the mythology of thousands of years, so it's good to know what you are getting into. But if you want to enjoy stories and events, from the ancient past of the Middle Earth, this book will give you more than you might expect. A fun fact is that Tolkien originally wanted to publish Lord of the Rings and The Silmarillion at the same time as works that complement each other and must be published together. He also wanted the Lord of the Rings trilogy to be published as a one book together with the illustrations but the publisher was afraid that the book would be very difficult to sell due to the high price and its thickness. Because of this, at the end, The Lord of the Rings was published in a three books and with only a minimum number of illustrations. Next book, last but not least, Unfinished Tales. This book is a pleasant addition to the history of Middle-earth. I enjoy these individual snippets of compelling stories a bit more than the stories from the complex Silmarillion. On the other hand, reading the stories from the first age was quite hard for me and I was glad when I finished them, but the rest of the book was great for filling gaps between the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion. Overall, it's a great work which should have a place among Tolkien's top works and the stories from the Third Age were a great addition to the Lord of the Rings books and for me the best ones from the whole book. Now we are heading to the last book written by Tolkien on this list, Adventures of Tom Bombadil. A small thin book for children which is full of lovely stories of the mythical character of Tom Bombadil. It is book written in verses so it isn't maybe for everyone, and also it's a quite difficult to read it because Tolkien used many dialects and old expressions from the English language, so if English is not your native language, you can have a lot of trouble reading this text because you will constantly look up for words in a dictionary. If you manage to crack this little book, at least you will feel good about yourself that you were able to understand it. And we came to the last book, which is Biography of J.R.R. Tolkien. 
This is the only book on the list which wasn't written by Tolkien, but by biographer Humphrey Carpenter, who is the only person who wrote Tolkien's biography and also met him in person. If you are a fan of Tolkien, this biography is very well written, so it's very easy to read. It begins with the background of the family even before Tolkien's birth in South Africa and continues through his youth, military service, academic career and also to his publishing activities and his later years at the end of his life. The story deals with the books he wrote and the circumstances under which they were published. It discusses the Tolkien's relationship with his wife, children, as well as his values and outlook on the life. This book is so well written that it provides a quality depiction of his life and work at its finest. So if you want to dig deep into the Tolkien's life, this book is definitely for you and it's nice closure at the end of all these books. So what do you guys think about it? Did you read all these books and do you have the same opinion on them? Or will you take this epic journey and read them in the future? Let me know in the comments. Also, you can share this video if you know somebody who is fan of Tolkien and will enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you will probably also like my other videos on this channel. Anyway, have a smooth rest of the day and I will see you next time.